Well, good morning uh, again, Walsall. Uh, here once again with the, uh, the good news, the only good news that there is, uh, not just in Walsall, but um, in all the world, good news of the gospel, that is God's Son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world to save wretched sinners uh, such as you and I, wretched, blind, and naked, and uh, without righteousness, without hope in this world, in the world to come, without Jesus, that is. So here, tell you about him, that uh, you might come to love him, that you might come to know him, and that you might come to bow the knee to him, to King Jesus, the ultimate. King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So my friends, I uh, offer to you a copy of the New Testament, the Bible, God's written word. It is uh, the word of God and the only place where you find the word of God in all the world. New Testament of the Bible offered to you quite freely and then uh, no cost, no obligation to you you're simply and only for the taking. If you like one, study, meditate upon God's Word. See what uh, He would say to you. Maybe, perhaps, He would speak peace to your soul. I'm sure that there's a lot of people in Walsall today who could uh, manage uh, a modicum of peace. You know, uh, it's not uh, something that... Uh, abounds, you know, in Walsall, in our country, in our land today, a lot of disturbance, a lot of distress, a lot of pain, misery, you know, it comes with the sin, you know, it comes with the territory, as we see, but there is a peace, you know, a peace, the Bible says, that goes, uh, you know, that passes all understanding, human understanding human comprehension that is and it comes to a person when they've made peace with God then they get the peace of God but of course first of all you got to make your peace with your maker you got to lay down the weapons of your warfare you know at the foot of the cross and you got to bow the knee to Jesus you got to take a knee to Jesus he's the one you don't bow you don't take a knee to men. You don't take a knee to men, whatever they are, you know? Whatever color their skins are, you know? Only one you take a knee to is King Jesus in humble submission, yielding yourself to him, body and soul. Because to belong to him, my friends, oh, what a privilege to know him, to belong to him, to know that you're no longer your own, but you belong to Jesus, and that he has paid fully the price for your sin and delivered you from the power of the devil. Only the gospel, only my gospel can do that for a person, my friend, and bring them to peace, peace, perfect peace, like a river, river running through your soul. Perfect peace, my friends, with God, and that passes all understanding. Yours for the want of believing. Yours for the want of faith in Jesus. Yours for the want of trusting. Yours for the want of giving up. Giving up, my friends, the wretched. Giving up the misery. Giving up the pain. Giving up the sin. And trusting in the lovely, lovely, lovely Son of God who came into the world to save, to rescue sinners such as you and I. So my friends, you'd like a copy of God's Word, you do feel free to come and ask us for one. Gladly, gladly place into your hands that you may read, meditate for yourself and see that Jesus is exactly who he claims to be, the Son of God with power. Able, my friends, 
to raise the dead to life, to give life, my friends, to those who will trust in him. King David, in the book of Psalms, he speaks about the sickness of sin, my friends. Psalm 31, verse 10, if you want to check it out. He says, for my life is spent with grief and my tears with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. Oh, my friends, the constant grief, you know, of human life. Isn't this a picture? Isn't this you? Isn't that you and I? My friends, isn't that our life? Isn't that all of us born into this world? Constant grief and sighing all the day long, year in and year out. You know why, my friend? Because as the Bible says, as surely as the sparks fly upwards, man is born to trouble. We are conceived, conceived in mother's womb. And then nine months later, we are born into this world. And King David says, we're born in sin, we're shaping in sin and iniquity. And my friends, right from the very get-go, what's the first thing that you do the moment you're born? What's the first thing you do? Ah, uh, no, yeah, tell me. What's the first thing you do? You don't know? Ah, uh, these kids today, eh, they don't know nothing. What's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you do the minute you're born? You start crying. You start crying. And my friends, nothing but grief and sighing, just like King David, all your days. Because as surely as the sparks fly upwards, and you never see sparks flying downwards, always upwards, as surely as the sparks fly upwards, Man is born to trouble. And whenever you find a human being in this world, my friends, you'll find grief, constant grief and sighing, just like King David. Oh, you see, you just want to be happy. I know. Everybody wants to be happy. What an intelligent person would not want to be happy, you know? You want to be happy. In fact, you would say, some of you would maybe say, you know, that that's the primary, that's the number one. Nothing else matters as long as I'm happy. But my friends, you never get there. And when you get there, it doesn't last for very long. It doesn't last for very long. Happiness, happy, I don't see happiness on your faces today. I don't see much happiness here in Walsall. If that's your primary aim, if that's your primary goal, well, I have to say to you, my friends, you're failing miserably. You're failing miserably. It's not seen on your faces. No, my friends, sighing, grief, and misery. All our days, my friends, all our days, because that's man's lot. That's our calling, my friends. Many, many of the afflictions, I tell you, that come to human beings in this world. And the Bible tells us why that is. It's because, my friends, we're conceived in sin. It's because we're born in sin. It's because, my friends, we live in sin all our days, but for the grace of God, you know, who can comfort, console, you know, and bring to us, oh no, no, he, he doesn't take it all away, he doesn't take the afflictions away, he doesn't take the sin away completely in this life, we're not made perfect here, down here, that's reserved for heaven, my friends, but no, no, my friends, he does comfort, he does console, he does he does uh, bestow his compassion, his mercy, his grace, his enabling. My friends, he does. Oh, he does. He grants peace to the sinner who in their crying, in their grief and sighing, who turn to his son, Jesus Christ, with their constant grief, seeking, 
my friends, alleviation. Seeking, my friends, a way out of the distress, a way out of the grief, a way out of the sighing. That their sighing, my friends, might be turned into crying, crying to God, that is, crying unto the Lord, that is. My friends, crying upon the name of the Lord in order that you might be saved. For the Bible says, don't you know, the Bible does say that whosoever shall call, call upon the name, cry upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, shall be saved. But that's the lot, my friends. That's a lot of men and women. They indulge in sin, you know, and they say, well, does it really matter if it makes me happy? They go about fornicating, you know? Sex outside of holy matrimony. Sex outside of marriage, you know? Sowing their wild, wild oaks, oats, they say, you know? Well, does it really matter if we are happy? Yes, it does, because it doesn't make you happy. It just brings more misery upon you. The same with all your sexual deviance. Same with your, your sodomy, your adulterating, you know, breaking the marriage bond, cheating on your husband, cheating on your wife, my friends, breaking those marriage bonds. Oh, oh, I'm happy now. We're divorced, you know. The marriage is broken up, but you know, we're happy now. Does it really matter? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, because it brings nothing but pain and misery to you. Sighing, constant sighing, crying, moaning, my friend, all your life long. It doesn't make you happy. Sin can't make you happy. Sin never makes anybody happy. It ruins you. It ruins your spouse, and it ruins your children as well. It brings you to ruin. The constant, constant, my friends, grief. Grief and sighing all your days long because you are conceived, you are born in sin, because you're a sinner by nature, and all you can do is nothing but sin. You can't stop yourself. You can't help yourself. You're impotent. You're powerless in the face, my friends, of the might and the power of sin. That's why you do it all day long. That's why not an hour of your life goes by that you do not sin. All the time, nothing but sin. And the result of it, my friends, is sighing, constant grief, my friends, all your life long. With not a modicum, not a measure of peace, my friends. Lest, of course, you turn to the only one who can forgive you. So it commences at birth, right from the very start of your days, right to the very end. And you finish your life, you finish your life, not in happiness, not in the hope of heaven. You finish your life with that same grief and sighing. Pure and evil have been the days of my life, says Jacob, and that's yours too. That's the lot of the sinner. That's the lot of every man born into this world. Because every man born into this world, except one Jesus, that is, is a sinner. Is a sinner, my friend. All of sin that comes short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one, says God. Not a man to a woman. So, my friends, the constant grief. Oh, the grief and the sighing. Because, my friends, because of sin. It begins and commences at birth and it continues all through your life. You know? All oh, the happiness of youth. If you're still, if you're still in your youth, oh, enjoy it. Enjoy it, my young friend. But uh, be warned, let me tell you, it won't last. Enjoy it while it does last, because after those days of your youth are over, it won't be long, it won't be long before the grief and the sighing comes. Now, my friends, 
is what we are born to. Because we are conceived and because we are born in sin. Because we are sinners by nature. Because we've departed from God. Apostatized from God. Because we are strangers to God. Enemies of God in our hearts. An enmity in your heart against God. At war with God. So how can there be peace? How can there be happiness? How can there be joy in your hearts and existence? Nothing, nothing but constant grief and sighing. That's your lot, my friends, and all your days until you make peace with your maker. Until that is, you surrender. Until that is, you yield to your maker through his son, Jesus Christ, and come to know the peace of God, the comfort, the consolation of a sinner redeemed, my friends, by the blood of the Lamb, the consolation, the comfort of knowing your sins are forgiven and that you're bound for eternal bliss and perfect happiness one day. But until then, grief and sighing, grief and sighing constantly, my friends, all the time, beginning at birth and all the way through your life. And compounded, compounded. I mean, your own state and condition is bad enough. Your own contribution to the chaos of the world, your own sin, you know, your own thoughts, words and actions, all that to answer for, you know, all that's bad enough, but all of it compounded by other wicked men that surround you, surrounded by them night and day, all the time, my friend, wicked men that add to your constant grief. Wicked evil men, my friends. Maybe some more wicked even than yourself, you know. And who are bent, hell-bent, I would say. Hell-bent, my friends. Maybe perhaps upon destroying your peace and happiness and causing you more and more grief and sighing. It's the lot of everyone, my friend, born into this world. And you can't escape it. We are all of us surrounded by wicked men. Wicked men and women who seek the destruction of our society. Who seek the destruction of your children. Haven't you seen? Haven't you heard? Haven't you read what it is that they seek to teach your children in your schools today, my friend? Oh, the wicked perversity. Oh, the ungodly uncleanness, my friends. Not only do they teach them unbelief, not, do, not only do they teach them the nonsense of that unscientific evolutionary nonsense, but my friends, now, now, they are teaching primary school children sexual deviance, filth and uncleanness, my friends. Wicked men, I tell you. Wicked men and women in your society that add to your sighing, add to your grief, my friends, seeking to corrupt your children, seeking to corrupt your young people, seeking to destroy your society, causing, causing insurrection, rioting and protesting and destroying other people's property, government property, even on the streets, while the police stand by and watch them and do nothing about it hardly. Is it any wonder there's nothing but grief and sighing? Is it any wonder there's no peace, no comfort, no consolation? Is it any wonder when you're surrounded by wicked, evil men and women who compound your grief, who compound your sighing and your grief. Continual weeping and sighing. But oh, my friends, that you would do this. Oh, that you would weep and sigh for your sin. 
Oh, my friends, that you would take yourself and get yourself beneath the cross of Jesus Christ, Son of God, who came, sent into the world, my friend, to save us from our sins, that, that you might be forgiven, that you might know pardon and peace with God. But my friends, you must needs weep and cry beneath the cross. Yes, weep for your misery, by all means, my friends. But you need to weep for your sins. You need to cry for them. You need to cry out to Jesus. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You need to sorrow, lament. You need a broken heart, my friends. That's what you need. No good just paying lip service to God with a little mess of religion in your mosque or your synagogue. You know, my friends, religion won't take away the sighing and the crying, won't take away the constant grief. No, no, my friends, a little mess of religion, that's just paying lip service to God. You can change your clothes, dress up in religious clothes, that won't do anything for your sins. That won't take away the constant grief. That won't take away the crying and the sighing. You've got to get beneath the cross, and you've got to cry out to Jesus, and you've got to cry to Him. You've got to weep, you've got to shed tears for your sin. You've offended God, departed from God. You're a hater of God. You're an enmity with God, hostile in your heart and mind against God. My friends, my friends, it's time for you to be weeping not laughing. Time for you to be sorrowing beneath the cross and crying out to Jesus that he might forgive you for your sin and iniquity, for your departure from God, for your neglect of God, your denial of God, your denial of God in the face of what's plain and simple to any, any intelligent human being that there is a God, even by, even by the things that he has made, you know that God is. Even by your own being, you know that God is. And my friends, my friends, your denial of God, your departure from God, because you love your sin, because you love the darkness, because you love your evil way. That's why you deny God. That's why you lie to yourself. That's why you deceive yourself. Because you love your sin. Even though it causes you constant grief and sighing. Well, you need to get beneath the cross. And you need to cry. You need to weep. You need to shed tears for your sins, my friend. Because you've offended a holy God. A righteous God. You've offended love. You've offended divine love. You've offended the one. The one, my friends, who made you for his glory. But you live for sin. You live for, you live for your wickedness. You're in love with your sin. You're in love with your evil ways. And then you wonder why you're unhappy. You wonder why you're faced with constant grief. You wonder why. Wonder why you go about sighing all the day long. My friends, it's your departure from God. It's your evil heart, deceitful heart, desperately wicked above all things, says God. And so deceitful that you gravitate towards that which is deceitful. You're magnetized, magnetized to the lie, to the deceitful, to the false. That's why you believe falsity such as evolutionary nonsense. That's why you gravitate towards false religion, Roman variety and the Meccan variety, false damnable religion. My friends, they couldn't mend, they couldn't mend one single human being, 
Jesus, my friend. The gospel, the power of God unto salvation. The mighty Son of God who descended from heaven, who became a man, walked this earth, died on a cross and rose again from the dead in order that you might be comforted, consoled, that you might be all oh, that you might be raised from the dead. Deadness and trespasses and sin made alive, made alive, my friends, and brought to repentance, brought to that place of crying, sorrow, grieving over your sin, my friends, not your unhappiness. You deserve your unhappiness. Your constant grief, my friends, it's your just deserts, my friends, because you're a sinner by nature. It's your sin, my friends. It's your departure from God, my friends, that you need to grieve over, that you need to sigh about. Under the cross of Jesus, who paid the price for sin, in order that you might be forgiven, comforted, and, and, and consoled. King David, he says, for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth, he says. My strength fails the collapse of human strength, my friend. Strength of mind, strength of mind. Sin affects the whole of your being. You know, you know when you when you do the dirty, when you do the the fornicate, when you do the sodomy, yes, it affects your body. You know, you get these filthy diseases. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You get these filthy diseases. But it's more than that, my friend. Sin affects the mind. Sin affects the mind. And the more in your mind. You give yourself over to sin, the more God gives you over to it. He tells you, he says, well, that's what you want. I'll give you more of what you want. I'll give you more of your sin, yeah? And he gives you over to a reprobate mind, a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting, not fitting even for animals to do, never mind human beings. So you see, my friends, the collapse of strength. A man's strength goes. Sin takes the strength out of a man and woman. Takes the strength of their mind away. It dulls the mind. It deadens the mind. It does the very opposite, my friend. The very opposite to what God, God would have for you. A broken mind. Don't you see people around you in your society with broken minds. Well, yeah, they're the obvious ones, you know? But it's all of you. It's all of you without God. Your mind's dull, you know? You're not as sharp up here, you know, as you ought to be. Sin makes a man stupid in mind to do stupid things, you know? I mean, tell me, Tell me the drunkard, you know, the drunkard that continues on, yeah, he knows, he knows, he understands he's destroying himself in body, he's destroying himself every which way, and yet he carries on with his drunkard, yeah, tell me that's not stupid, eh, tell me that's not a, a mind that's failing. So you see, my friend, sin affects you every which way. It affects your mind. It makes you stupid. It makes you stupid. You know how the drink makes people stupid? You know how the drugs make people stupid? Well, sin makes people stupid as well. To do stupid things that the otherwise wouldn't do. That's sin, my friend. My strength, my strength fails, says David. You know, collapse of of human strength of body causes physical pain. Many people, my friends, many people walking about in your world today 
ought to be healthy and strong. But you look at them and you can see that their strength, my friends, they couldn't run across the street. They couldn't run across the street, never mind a mile. Why? Because of their simple lifestyle. Because of the way that they live, abusing themselves. Drunken, gluttonous, drug abusing. Yeah, affecting, dulling the mind and affecting the body. Affecting the body, my friends. Everything you do has an effect on you. Has a power over you. And my friends, all oh my friends, when sin dominates, when sin dominates, controls your life, your strength begins to ebb from you. Your strength begins to fail. Strength of body, strength of mind, you begin to fail. And my friends, unless Jesus, unless the mighty Son of God, unless He comes by His saving grace and power and heals you, heals you in mind and body, heals you in soul, unless He raises you from the dead, unless, my friends, He comes with life and puts life into your being. Life, my friends, is not something you have naturally. You have an existence, not life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Only Jesus can give life, eternal life. And he gives it. He gives it to those who follow him. I give unto them eternal life, he says, and they shall never perish. A quality of life now, here in this world. Wholesomeness of life, strength of life, my friends, of body and mind. Those that is, those who relent, those who repent, those who turn from their sin, and those who turn to and put their trust in God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And then, my friends, then you're afflicted by others. Other wicked men and women around you afflict you and take the strength out of you so that just like King David, you can say, my strength, my strength, feel it. But David tells us the cause the cause of it, my friend. He says, because of mine iniquity. Because of mine iniquity, he says. Because of my sin. Because of my lawless deeds, that's why. That's why the constant crying. That's why the collapse of human strength. Because of iniquity. Because of sin, my friend. That's the cause. That's the root matter. Deal with the root, my friends. Deal with the cause, and you get rid of the effect. But all the time, you want the effects taken away. But you don't consider the root. You don't consider the cause. The cause, my friends, is your iniquity, is your sin. It abounds, my friends and causes you that constant grief and sighing, the collapse of your strength. My friend, the cause, because of iniquity, he said. The real cause, my friend. Oh, King David. King David was a righteous man. He trusted in God through Jesus Christ, his son. But he wasn't perfect. He wasn't perfect. He knew, my friends, the same crying and sighing. He knew, my friends, he knew what sin was. But he knew he was wise enough to know what the cause was. You know? He didn't just explain it away. Happens to everybody else. Oh, you know, happens to me. No, my friends, he identifies it. He nails it 
the cause of the effect. And the cause is inequity. The cause is sin, my friend. That's the cause of your constant grief and sighing. That's the cause of the feeling, my friends, of your strength. Sin, my friends, sin. Sin is a bitter. Sin is a bitter. Sin is an accursed poison, my friend. And it's in your veins. It's in your DNA. It's in the entirety of your being. It's like leaven and spreads through the whole lump. All of you, my friends, permeated with sin, the poison, the toxic. Oh, oh, my friends, it's a bitter, bitter poison. But until you taste the bitterness, until God, by His grace, causes you to taste the bitterness of your sin, you're never, you're never going to leave it. You're never going to forsake it. You're never going to abandon it. You're never going to look for a cure. You're never going to recognize the sweetness, all oh, the lovely sweetness of the gospel. God's Son sent into the world to die. Not because he had sinned. Not because he had done anything wrong. Oh, he sighed. And he cried. He was grief-stricken, but not for sins that he had done, but for sins that you and I have done. He cried and sighed for the sins of the world. He cried and sighed for the sin-cursed world. Oh, he sighed and he cried, but not because he was a sinner. He was sinless, is sinless, the sinless Son of God who came to pay the price, who came, my friends, to rescue us from that bitter, toxic, poison, that accursed disease, my friends, that has afflicted us all, the sickness of sin. He came with the cure. He came with the cure, the remedy, the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of God's people, those who will trust in Him, to take their sin away, take away the cause, my friend, of the constant grief and of the collapse of human strength. And by His grace, by grace, by His grace to bring forgiveness, to bring pardon to bring peace with God, to bring healing to the soul, to the bodies of men and women. Oh, the mighty, mighty Son of God, strong to save, mighty, mighty to save, I tell you. He can save the worst derelict in Walsall. He can, he can save the vilest sinner in Walsall who truly trusts in Him. Oh, that moment, that moment when the vilest sinner puts their trust in Jesus, that moment from God, a pardon they receive, and the comfort, and the blessing of peace with God, and the peace of God, healing for body and soul, made well so that you could sing, with the hymn writer, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. But not until, not until you take a knee, not until you bow the knee to King Jesus, not until you surrender, not until you yield, not until you abandon the poison, not until you recognize the sickness, not until you recognize the disease, not until you turn from it, forsaking it, abandoning it, with no thought of returning to it, and turning to Jesus, the only Savior, 
the only healer, the only comforter, the only one, my friends, who can pacify you in heart and mind, Jesus. Oh, my friends, oh, my friends, sighing, grief and sighing all your days, pining away, pining away, sighing, constant grief and sighing all your days to the end until you die, until you die, until you breathe your last and go out of this world. But then the ungodly, then the godless will say to you, well, at least your grief and sighing will be all over then. Not so. Not so. Then you've got the eternal torment. Then you've got hell to deal with. Then, my friends, your face with the worm that dieth not and the flames that are never quenched. Then, my friends, your worst nightmare, your worst grief, your worst sighing will only just have begun. Death is not the end. Death is not a state of non-being. That's, that's a delusion. That's a delusion. That's another deceit, my friends. And many, many suicidals are deceived, my friends, by that notion that death is the end. It's not. It is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. After that, the judgment. Oh, you see, nobody ever came back to tell us what happens after death. Yes, they did. Jesus. The mighty Son of God rose from the dead and he tells us plainly, black and white, read it in God's word. It is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. Judgment, judgment. Damnation. Eternal, everlasting flame. In the torments of hell. Flee the wrath to come. Flee the present wrath of God. That's all over you like a rash today. And oh, the wrath to come. The judgment to come. Flee from it, my friends. Run, 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 rabbit, run. Run, sinner, run. Into the arms of Jesus into the arms of the Savior, into the arms of the one who commands you today, repent ye and believe the gospel in order that you might be saved, in order that you might be redeemed. David, David, at least he confesses his sin. He fesses up, my friend. He fastens to his sin. Constant grief, he said. Constant grief and sighing. The collapsing, collapsing of human strength. But he confesses. He owns up. He holds up his hand. And he says, because of my iniquity, because of sin, that's the problem. That's the disease. That's the sickness. That's the root of the matter. That's what needs to be dealt with. The sin, my friends. The sickness of sin needs to be dealt with. And only Jesus, only the master physician, only Jesus, only he can cure. Only he, my friend, can make you well only Jesus. But you say you have no sin. You say I'm okay. You say I have no sin. You say I'm okay. I don't need this gospel. I don't need this Jesus. And you call God a liar and you multiply your sin. 
and you multiply the sickness and you multiply your grief you multiply your shying you multiply you compound you compound the failing of your strength but go to Jesus go to Jesus and he will give you he will give you strength Go to Jesus. He will give you grace. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Law came by Moses. No strength, no power there. Nothing but condemnation. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The truth that makes a man free. The grace, my friends, that brings healing. That brings salvation that brings hope, that brings comfort, that brings consolation, the grace of God that comes by Jesus Christ. And so I send you, I send you to Jesus. Go to him. I compel you, compel you to go to Jesus that you might be made well, that you might be saved, that you might be delivered from the increasing grief and from the increasing failure of your strength until there's no strength left in you to even call upon the name of the Lord that you might be saved but while you have the strength while you are able to by the grace of God by the grace of God my friends I beg you Call upon the name of the Lord, for whosoever shall, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. God promised. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. In your sin, that is. Believe not that I am he, ye shall perish. Ye shall die in your sin, says Jesus. Only believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Believe, believe, well, soul. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Salvation! Salvation! Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel also. Repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's word it's offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you, the New Testament of the Bible. Freely offered to you, no obligation to you or cost. You'd like a copy of God's Word, study, meditate upon. See that these things are so that you might be healed, delivered from the sickness of sin and into God's kingdom enter in. Like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, bless you also, and have mercy, mercy I say, mercy, upon your precious, never dying soul.